Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with my review for Rage 2. This game drops on May 14th on the Xbox One, PS4, and PC for both Steam and Bethesda Net at the price of 60 big ones. Now I haven't made it a secret that I've been really looking forward to this one, so let's just get right into it and talk about if this game has lived up to my own personal hype. The story doesn't matter in Rage 2 at all. I'm making that very abundantly clear. I'm hardly talking about the story in my review because it matters that little. You'll encounter some wacky characters, but it's generally designed to be setting you up to blast through some neat set pieces, and that's all the story really does. I liked how they respected and built off the lore in Rage 1. There is a dense codex that you can read through, and I found some interesting tidbits in there. Now, the story isn't bad by any means. In fact, it stays out of your way, and there's a clear reason for that. Rage 2 is designed to be a gameplay focused experience. I actually went back to my footage and it took 25 minutes for the introduction to wrap up and the game to toss me into the open world. We just don't see that that often nowadays. And if you're here for the story, you're in it for the wrong reasons. Rage 2 is about the nutty off the walls gameplay and also you do not need to play Rage 1 to understand Rage 2. So you do play as Walker, the last of the Rangers of Vinland, after a devastating attack depletes your forces. In a mission for revenge, you set out to activate Project Dagger, and the world almost immediately opens up to you. Now, the main story itself is quite short, wrapping up within about 12 hours or so, but worry not, there are plenty of open world activities to complete that will keep you logging in dozens of more hours. Now, Rage 2 may be one of the most fun games I've ever had a chance to play. The core of Rage 2's world, moment-to-moment -moment action, and everything in between is progression. That's the name of the game. Whether it's project points, cash, felt trite, weapon mods, perks, abilities, new weapons, objectives to complete, the game is constantly overwhelming you with sweet rewards that excited me and carried me to the next mission because I knew I would have a new toy to play with. And even when I ran out of new toys to play with, it was still fun because it was like I was in the damn sandbox. That progression plays into the insane amount of markers you'll be tackling on your map. There is so much to clear out in Rage 2, and while it could be simplified down to drive, shoot, repeat, it goes way deeper than that. Sometimes you'll be destroying the fuel supplies of the goon squad, other times you'll be wiping out their den. Maybe you'll find yourself ambushing a convoy for some vehicular combat action, or perhaps a gigantic authority sentry bot caught your eye. There are dozens of objectives to complete and when you mesh that together with all your weapons abilities and upgrades the fun truly never ceases each of the locations that you'll be visiting aren't mere copy and paste either they're visually enticing stoking curiosity and giving you a thirst to constantly explore through all the diverse regions packed into this world developers id and avalanche even took a page out of the bethesda game studios handbook and used the map markers at the top of the screen to give you that feeling of there being something around the corner that is brand new constantly and so it's pulling at that gamer ADD and you're going all over the place just trying to do everything it activates that completionist in you the areas in game not only look fantastic though but they're intelligently crafted shooting arenas too it felt as if extensive QA went into each and every zone where combat would occur as there was always ammo in the right place enemies didn't overwhelm but provided a decent challenge and cover as well as areas to get to the high ground were placed in a manner that didn't break emergency because it was built in a believable fashion. That's a hell of an achievement for the level designers because that shows there weren't any shortcuts when crafting the locations and it really does show. So a big round of applause to them. As you finish these areas, you'll earn project points which tie into one of the three leaders of Project Dagger. And this could be a little bit reminiscent of a Far Cry game, but I promise you it is far from that. The progress is generous and you have to get at least each of these up to level five in the main story, which doesn't require a grind at all, especially given how fun it is. You can take these project points and invest them into new perks that do all sorts of good stuff. These range from increasing rewards an already enticing part of the gameplay loop, all the way to changing how certain items function. Decorating these locations are also pink chests which contain cash that can be used at vendors and feltrite that is a part of unlocking perks in the leveling system. You will also discover arc chests which may house unique items such as weapon mods or vehicle parts. You can take the weapon mods and further customize your guns, tailoring it to your playstyle. Maybe you want to increase reload speed, rate of fire, unique perks for guns that don't overlap, such 
such as your assault rifle being able to reload when you switch it out for something else after 10 seconds so it gets you swapping guns and playing in a brand new play style it's all there your vehicle can be upgraded the same way with parts that can be earned in numerous ways but most notably are convoys which shines a lot on the versatility of rage 2. it's hard to make a finely tuned shooter that has well-built combat arenas and loads of fun toys to mess with it's even more difficult to do that when there has to be a focus on car combat in your game too fortunately enemies don't go all far cry on you and harass you around the map the entire time when you're driving from point a to point b which actually quelled one of my larger fears with the game going in when you engage in vehicular combat it felt mentally similar to the gunplay in the best manner you see what's great about rage 2 is that its gameplay is fast frantic and full of explosions but it still requires your focus to chain together awe inspiring combos as well as surviving out there whether you're in or out of your machine of death you'll be glued to the screen because the enemy design makes you have to focus on weak spots especially when on the higher difficulties or doing some of the tougher challenges in for example mutant bash tv aka rages horde mode if there is one thing that folks may not enjoy in Rage 2, I think it's the potential of what I like to call Ubisoft-itis. Its mission design never felt like a checklist to me, but it definitely caters to more of a completionist who wants to lose themselves in the gameplay. There is, ironically, a similarity to Mad Max here. However, Mad Max had far less things to do that were varied, and also they were less interesting at that. It's just something you should be aware of going in. I also mentioned satisfying and fluid gunplay in Rage 2, but there are neat useful abilities such as dashing or scatter you can also unlock other powers later in the game that i'm not going to spoil for you because it's a big part of the game but they also have their own upgrade trees that augment their performance damage and so on pretty much if you can use it in this game it has an upgrade tree and tons of rewards for investing in it you see that's the thing. Rage 2 is the first game I can think of in a long, long while that never had an issue with spoiling me. It didn't care about its economy, how rich I became, how strong I became. It just cares that I was having a fun time playing it. Now, I'm clearly a sucker for tons of rewards in game, especially if it feeds right back into the reason I'm playing, but they did such a bang up job on progression in this game and making me feel like there were tons of things to do and that I was being properly rewarded for it oh and there are cheat codes so when you want to come back on maybe a second playthrough where trophies and achievements aren't a concern that you're going to lose out on you can quadruple your feltrite income throw explosive wing sticks and have the announcer from goddamn mlb slugfest scream in your ears while you wreak havoc it brings things to the next level of ridiculousness and it serves as a rightful punchline to what this game is all about which is fun now, on the not so fun side of things, performance could be a bit spotty at times, and that was really the main detour from a near perfect experience here. Stutters mostly came while traveling through the open world by vehicle and during one specific gunfight. Granted, I was recording my gameplay unlike a lot of people out there, but I am also playing on medium settings on a pretty beefy rig i'm pretty proud of this rig so i feel like frame drops shouldn't be happening here on the other hand it let me appreciate how great the game looks despite my lower setting i also hit the worst type of bug in my honest opinion the one where audio flat out disappears this also happened to me in days gone if any of you out there remember and it's equally as frustrating here it becomes a game that's mandatory to use subtitles not only to sidestep this bug but also because so many things can happen and it gets really loud so it tends to override that dialogue a bit too much i know some may not care about that but i am aware that many gamers turn off subtitles intentionally because they find themselves staring at the text rather than what's happening on screen so i want to put it out there because of that issue on the sound side of things guns sound heavy destructive powerful any word in the dictionary that could properly describe eviscerating your opponent fits the description of rage 2's weapons and vehicles even the snap when you set enemies on fire with your revolver has this sharpness to it that felt as if there was equal focus put into that versus an assault rifle voice work on the other end is great and allows these wacky characters to hold your attention more when they're on screen or if you can hear them on your radio once again i didn't find anyone i'd be attached to and that's not the focus of this game but the voice acting makes it a more entertaining ride as you go along now rage 2 is also 
also going to have probably the most underrated ambient soundtrack of 2019. That's because 90% of the time you're going to be hearing explosions and gunfire. But if you take a second and remember what I'm saying here, breathe, absorb the world for a little bit. There may be a track or two out there that actually surprises you because it was a banger, man. I got to say, it really set the atmosphere and the tone for a lot of my experience before I went into the next objective. So listen closely to that ambient soundtrack. Now it's time for my verdict. If it wasn't obvious enough, allow me to make it painfully clear. I very much enjoyed Rage 2. It is easily the best game I've played this year so far, and it's the first time in a while that a game that I've personally had a lot of hype for has really lived up to it. Now, it did fall short in some ways. I hope technically it does improve, and I do know that some people may not appreciate the way that the objectives are laid out like I did, and may not fall as deeply in love with the gunplay and vehicle combat as I did. I know that everyone has different preferences out there, but I just thought this game was so much fun. It was nice to see in a day and age where we're constantly seeing every story try to pull every emotion out of me, that there's a game that just says, have a blast, man. Go crazy out there. Here's a bunch of wild stuff for you to do, and that's all we want you to do. I really appreciated that Rage 2 strikes the perfect chord with me this year. It's a game I'll absolutely be returning to. I'll absolutely be streaming. I want to do separate playthroughs on a harder difficulty with cheat codes. I see so much fun in this game. It reminds me of when I was younger on the PS2, on the Nintendo 64, and that's what I played games for. I love my stories, man. You guys know that. That's the best types of games when you have that amazing story combined with that amazing gameplay. But this time around, it just reminds me of when I was younger and I was playing an amazing game simply because it was fun so if you're looking for fun look no further rage 2 is a day one pickup in my book at 60 dollars but if you're not about the bugs maybe you want to wait a little bit for a couple of patches or you're a little hesitant on the gameplay structure and your overall potential investment in the gameplay progression then wait for what i'd say is a safe area like 40 dollars. but all in all i think this is a game that you should play and that'll conclude my review for Rage 2. So ladies and gentlemen, as always, if you have any questions, do fire away in the comments down below. You guys know I hop in there sometimes and I do try to answer as many of you as possible. I hope you found this review informative. Big shout out to Bethesda for providing the review copy over the weekend. And I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.